observations are often you know, considered the back of house, it's the kind of the invisible, but whenever anybody comes in, um, they're fascinated by just how much goes on here. And also the intimacy, one of the things I love about being a conservator is the intimacy that you have with the artworks. You know, you, you get to assess them, view them, analyse them, like go right into little tiny details before they're glazed and put on the wall. That's something I've really appreciated with these works. I'm a paper conservator here at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. I began working here about five, close to five years ago. My connection with these drawings from Yurikala actually began around then. The, my first task when I started working here was to prepare a group of Aboriginal paintings on paper uh, for exhibition. I learnt that there was a whole gamut of drawings, paintings collected during anthropological research um, and expeditions to Central Australia and Arnhem Land that have just really not been on the art radar, on the gallery radar. Ronald and Catherine Burnt um, met through anthropology, met through their passion for anthropology. The Burnts wanted to collect bark paintings while they were in, in Yurikala. They realised with the lack of a jetty and access to, to the boat that they arrived in and that they would have to return to Sydney in, that the, the risk of damage to the bark paintings was quite high. They had previously used paper and crayons and pencils on expeditions to Central Australia where bark painting wasn't a tradition. They decided that that would be appropriate to order a duplicate set as a duplicate copy. It was not just in case of damage, it was so that they could actually record, um, annotate, write notes and then uh, write the full description in their journals. So on many of them, you, there are, I think on some of them there are even up to 90 numbers. When I first saw the drawings, I went to visit the Burnt Museum in 2009 and I had never seen anything like it. I was utterly amazed. The size, the colour, um, they're so strong, they're so powerful. So, some of them are really gentle and rhythmic, others... If I didn't know that they were Aboriginal drawings, I would have no idea where they came from. The works are actually in amazing condition probably partly because they have been, they were rolled for 40 years and then were under boards for 20 and they haven't been on display and haven't been accessed. The approach to conservation of the drawing collection is really quite simple. We'll be repairing edge tears, um, unfolding corners where they've been um, folded over through storage. So here we can see the, um, the effect of the paper being rolled for around 40 years and it's, it actually kind of looks a bit like corrugated iron, doesn't it? We won't be trying to remove that, um, partly because it's such a massive task for the whole collection, but also it tells the story, it's another part of the story of the drawings. Okay, so this drawing shows the use of graphite and how at certain angles it's, it's almost iridescent, it glows, it shimmers. It's really quite beautiful, but you know, you need to be look at them down on the ground level, which when they were drawing them, they would have actually got that effect. And you can also see the use of pencil in this, um, this pink appears to be pencil uh, here. We believe the pencils came from the mission school. Pencil and chalk were also used in the drawings. Something I'm really looking forward to is actually seeing the whole spread of the exhibition, artist by artist. Mm -hmm.